Have you ever wondered how nations collect vast financial resources, enough that can shape global economies? What if we told you there are entities known as sovereign wealth funds that manage trillions of dollars in assets and play a crucial role in the international financial landscape? Sovereign wealth funds are state-owned investment vehicles that manage enormous pools of capital derived from a country's surplus reserves or commodity revenues. These funds invest in various assets worldwide, including stocks, bonds, real estate, and even cutting-edge technologies. With their immense financial firepower, sovereign wealth funds have the potential to influence markets, rescue failing companies, and reshape industries. The proliferation of sovereign wealth funds is a direct result of globalization and the accumulation of wealth by resource-rich nations. As these countries sought to diversify their investments and secure future prosperity, sovereign wealth funds emerged as a strategic tool. However, their rapid growth has sparked debates surrounding transparency, geopolitical influence, and even national security implications. The History of the Sovereign Wealth Fund In 2005, the term Sovereign Wealth Fund emerged suddenly, coined by Andrew Rosanov in an article titled, Who Holds the Wealth of Nations? This concept marked a shift from traditional reserve management to sovereign wealth management, empowering global officialdom with unprecedented spending power. China's sovereign wealth funds made a significant entry into global markets in 2007 and have ever since then expanded in scale and scope. These funds proved to be instrumental in utilizing sovereign capital to contain the early stages of the turmoil from the 2007-2008 global financial crisis, leveraging their ability to actively participate in the market and react swiftly during times of chaos. From 2008 to 2021, the sovereign wealth funds experienced rapid growth, with global assets under management skyrocketing from around 4 trillion US dollars to an astounding 10 trillion. These funds have proven to be wise investments, engaging in various asset classes such as stocks, bonds, real estate, private equity, and hedge funds. Many have ventured into institutional real estate, making direct investments worth billions of dollars. While sovereign wealth funds have a long history spanning over a century, their numbers have surged since the turn of the millennium. Non-federal U.S. state funds established the earliest SWFs in the mid-19th century, initially intended to finance specific public services. Notably, Texas paved the way by establishing the Permanent School Fund in 1854 and also the Permanent University Fund in 1876, using public school lands obtained through the 1845 Annexation Treaty with the United States. These funds aimed to benefit primary and secondary schools as well as universities. The Kuwait Investment Authority, a commodity SWF, was the first established for a sovereign state in 1953, predating Kuwait's independence from the United Kingdom. As of July 2023, Kuwait's sovereign wealth fund, known as Ajal Fund, has reached an astonishing worth of $853 billion. Another early registered SWF is the Reserve Equalization Reserve Fund of Kiribati, which originated in 1956 when the British administration imposed a levy on phosphate exports. Over time, it has grown impressively to $520 million. Sovereign wealth funds, with their vast resources and strategic investments, play a crucial role in shaping global financial landscapes. Their evolution mirrors the rise of economic powerhouses, driving growth and prosperity on a grand scale. The Savings SWF's Story When nations find themselves swimming in budgetary surpluses and unburdened by international debt, they oftentimes face a conundrum. Simply hoarding this excess liquidity or squandering it on immediate consumption isn't always feasible or very wise. This dilemma is particularly pronounced for countries reliant on raw material exports, things like oil, copper, or diamonds. 
The inherent characteristics of resource revenue, volatile prices, unpredictable extraction, and finite resources prompt the creation of sovereign wealth funds. SWFs serve two primary purposes, stabilization and savings. Stabilization SWFs aim to curb the roller coaster ride of government revenues, countering the detrimental impact of boom bust cycles on national economies and public spending. Savings SWFs, such as Norway's government pension fund, accumulate reserves for future generations. These funds can potentially shield against the resource curse, although scholarly opinions on this matter do diverge. However, the motives for establishing SWFs are not limited to economic considerations alone. They may also have strategic implications, serving as war chests during uncertain times. Sovereign wealth funds venture into diverse investments, ranging from startups to renewable energy companies. They empower states to utilize selective equity investments to advance their industrial policies and strategic interests. Surprisingly, a study in 2014 revealed that SWFs are not primarily created for reserve accumulation or commodity export specialization. Instead, the proliferation of SWFs can be attributed to a trend, akin to a fashionable fad, where governments succumb to peer pressure and perceive SWFs as the in thing to do. As influential market participants, SWFs sway other institutional investors, who perceive investments alongside SWFs as inherently safer. Sovereign wealth funds are not just a financial tool. They have the potential to completely reshape the trajectory of a nation. Like a mighty river carving its path through uncharted terrain, SWFs unlock new possibilities, shielding economy from turbulent tides and propelling development. These funds embody the essence of prudence, acting as guardians of future nations and fortifying a nation's position on the global stage. With SWFs, countries possess a formidable arsenal to weather uncertainty and to navigate a rapidly changing world. The New Hedge Funds SWFs have garnished significant attention and scrutiny due to their expanding size and influence in recent years. The concerns surrounding these funds revolve around their potential impact on various asset markets and national security risks associated with foreign investments. Countries like the United States have enacted legislation, such as the Foreign Investment in National Security Act of 2007, to safeguard against potential threats posed by SWFs. Lawrence Summers, a former U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, has expressed concerns about wealthier foreign funds overtaking American assets, which could undermine the principles of capitalism. In response, the European Union has contemplated the use of golden shares to block certain foreign acquisitions, but this approach has been largely dismissed to avoid international protectionism. The U.S. addresses these concerns through the Exxon Florio Amendment, administered by the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, seen as CFIUS. Transparency is another significant worry surrounding SWFs, as their lack of openness troubles investors and regulators alike. Questions arise about the size and source of the funds, investment goals, internal checks and balances, disclosure of relationships, and holdings in private equity funds. SWF's diverse practices make it challenging to establish consistent regulations, leading some to compare them to potentially risky new hedge funds. To address these concerns, several SWFs convened in Santiago, Chile in 2008 under the leadership of the International Monetary Fund. They formed the International Working Group of Sovereign Wealth Funds, which drafted the Santiago Principles. These principles set global standards for transparency, independence, and accountability in SWF operations. They were presented to the IMF International Monetary Financial Committee and subsequently published. The International Forum of Sovereign Wealth Funds was established to ensure ongoing adherence of these standards and to represent SWFs in international policy debates. The Santiago Principles have gained significant traction, with 30 SWFs collectively managing 80% of global sovereign wealth assets, formally endorsing them as of 2016. These efforts aim to provide a common framework for SWFs, fostering transparency and responsible practices in their operations. 
By adhering to these principles, SWFs can address concerns surrounding their impact on asset markets, national security risks, and lack of transparency, all while promoting responsible governance within the SWF community. The Financial Titans as of December 24th, 2020, Sovereign Wealth Funds were managing an astounding 7.94 trillion US dollars in assets. Imagine a treasure chest filled with riches beyond your imagination. Among these funds, 5.4 trillion came from oil and gas exports, like a gushing fountain of wealth. Non-commodity SWFs, on the other hand, receive funding from sources such as foreign exchange reserves, government budget surpluses, and privatization revenues. It's no surprise that countries from the Middle East and Asia hold a whopping 77% of all SWFs. They're like financial superheroes protecting and growing their nation's wealth. The Collapse SWFs have faced significant challenges, with some even collapsing in the past. Notable examples of these collapses include Algeria's FRR, Brazil's FSB, Ecuador's various SWF arrangements, Papua New Guinea's MRSF, and Venezuela's FIEM and FONDEN. Political instability emerged as the primary culprit behind their depletion, overshadowing economic factors. Investing in SWFs from unstable nations poses risks for recipient countries, as the uncertainty and likelihood of disinvestment due to political risks loom large. Fortunately, stable countries like Denmark, Qatar, China, and Australia enjoy a shield against SWF depletion thanks to their political stability. Sovereign wealth funds and state-owned investment vehicles have become powerful forces in the global economy. As guardians of trillions of dollars, these funds literally shape markets, secure future prosperity, and also raise concerns about transparency and geopolitical influence. If you like this video, then you're in for a treat with another one to help you navigate the complexities that are finance.